So this is my son's uh, 2020 rifle buck. And as you can tell, hopefully that's focusing in there a little bit. He's a little bit worse for wear. You can see here these top bones are split and loose. And his two nasal bones are actually missing, which I have those here. Now the reason this happened is I started boiling this head out. I was going to make a video of it, but it all kind of went south. So you really wouldn't learn a whole lot from that video, trust me. Um, I've done three or four of these before and they turned out good. This one, the first day I started boiling the head out, I had to stop a couple hours into it because something came up. So it cooled down. The next day I heated it back up, started boiling the head again, and then my burner quit. So I had to switch heat sources, so I had to stop again. So all the, all the heating up and cooling down just really slowed the process. And when these heads cook too long or boil too long, then these bones start coming apart. That's what causes that. The good news is, as long as you keep the pieces, none of this stuff breaks, it just comes apart. So I didn't get to get a good video out of how to boil this head out. But the good news is, I want to show you, if this happens to you, how we can repair this head to make it look right back to normal. Replace these bones. We'll put this back. And then we'll, uh, then we'll bleach it out. Now, I will tell you, I'm going to use a different technique this year than, than what I've used in the past. Used to, I would just put the head back in clean water with peroxide bring it back up to a boil again and let that do the uh, the bleaching. Obviously this one's had plenty enough time in the hot water so we're going to use some uh, volume 40 cream on this one and see how that turns out. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is one I did two years ago. Killed this deer on a quota hunt and I think this may have been the very first one that I ever did on my own. So I'm thinking that there's no reason why we can't make this one look just as good as this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rubber band. I'm going to wrap it good and tight. Double it up here. Really good and tight around this part here. Then once I get my rubber band on there, I can step these bones down into where they go. So you can see there we've got, we've got them back in place here on both sides. And we still have a little bit of a gap here. You can see through. If that's something you think would bother you, um, I think I can show you how to fix that as well. But for now, first step, we're gonna get this part in, in place with the rubber band so it'll hold it. We're gonna get some kind of glue. Not really particular what kind, this is what I got. No particular reason, it's just what I ran into and I picked it up. I'm just going to put a little drop here on the tip. You obviously don't want to put it where your, where your rubber band is or uh, your rubber band will stick to the skull and you don't want that. Now I've got a damp rag here or a damp paper towel and while it's still wet I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the excess. Then I'm going to put a little bit on either side. And we'll wipe that off. Now I'm going to let that set up, give it a few minutes, then come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now that we got that part done, I'm just going to leave this rubber band on there. 
for a while just to make sure this has time to dry up. So now we're going to replace these nasal bones. Sometimes they slide right on, sometimes they're a little tricky, but if you start this little narrow bone, it goes underneath this bone here. So if you get it under there, that gets you lined up pretty good. You slide right back in place. Just like a jigsaw puzzle. Like I said, none of this stuff is broken. It just came apart. So now what I'm gonna do, now that I've got it lined up, I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit. Just a little drop of glue right in there. Shove it back in place. Take my rag. Wipe off the excess. Now we'll give that one just a little bit before we do the other side just to make sure we don't knock it back loose. All right, this side's looking pretty good, so we're gonna put it on the other side. Same thing, put the small bone behind that bone. Slip it right into place, just like that. Same thing again, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit. Put a little drop of glue on it. Wipe the excess off. I'm also gonna go ahead and put a little glue on these bottom cracks right here where it joins together. Put a little there, put a little there. Now I would imagine you could probably go ahead and, and bleach the skull out first and then do all these repairs. And who knows, I mean, the bleaching process may undo all this. If it does, we'll just do it again. But I wanted to go ahead and get it together get it looking somewhat normal, and then we'll start the bleaching process. So I've given this glue a few minutes to dry up. I think it's gonna be fine. Uh, I'm gonna use my manly man scissors and cut this rubber band off. And the reason I'm gonna do that is just in case this is still a little fragile, I don't wanna risk breaking these back off when I try to pull the rubber band off. Looking better already. So the one thing that you do not want to do during this process is get any of this uh, developer on your antlers. Because if it will whiten this, I'm sure it will whiten that. And you want this to stay as natural as possible. Now I don't trust myself good enough to not get any on these. So I'm going to take some black electrical tape since it's stretchy and I'm going to do my best at taping these off. That way I don't get into the developer on antlers. Not the prettiest job in the world, but it'll serve the purpose. So this way I don't have to worry about getting developer on the antlers. I just went up to the base of the brow tines. I think that'll be fine, but I can still get up under 
the tape and make sure we get winder up in there. <clears throat> All right, so this is what I'm going to use. 40 volume cream. I've never dealt with this stuff before, but I would imagine that uh, gloves would be a good idea. So we've got the deer head. <clears throat> we've got it pieced back together. We've got the antlers protected. I bought this big jar of this, which is way overkill because this entire quart was just $6.50. So why not? Poured it out in the bottom of this water bottle. I cut the bottom off the water bottle. I've got this little, probably a one inch paintbrush. And I've got the skull laying on a piece of uh, this press and seal paper. I wanted to use plastic wrap, but it turns out we don't have any plastic wrap. So there goes that. So I wanted to keep this as clean as possible. The reason it's on this is once I get this thing coated, I'm gonna to try to wrap it up. And I saw someone else do this on another video. I'm not exactly sure why, but I would imagine you do that to keep uh, the cream from drying once you apply it. Because once we put that cream on here, it's gonna stay on there for probably at least two hours. So I guess the idea is, is not to allow that to dry out. Well, I guess we don't have anything to lose. We'll get started. You want to put this stuff on, from what I understand, really good and thick. Get it shoved back in those nasal pa passages good, the sinuses. Got it all coated pretty good. Actually on this front, I'm gonna put, I feel like you probably can't put too much. So we'll make sure we get enough. And the good thing is we wait a couple hours, we rinse this off. If it's not as wide as we would like for it to be, then we'll put another coat on and do it again. So I'm going to replace this piece of wax paper here because some of that dripped on it. And what I don't want to do is wrap it up and end up getting on the antlers. Set him on there and then we're going to just very loosely wrap him up.
I want to get another little piece and lay over the top. All right, now we wait. So while we're waiting on the uh, developer to do its job, hopefully, I'm gonna start preparing this plaque. So this is just an old rough cut piece of slab of walnut that I cut with a chainsaw, nothing special. That's what I'm gonna to use to mount the skull onto. So I'm gonna come about three quarters of the way up, pretty close to the top. Looks like we've got right at 13 inches, so six and a half inches across. Should get us pretty close to the middle. Drill a hole there. Show you what that's for later. And we'll flip it over. This is gonna be the front. Flip it over on the back. I'm going to install our hanger. These nails are tiny, so I'm going to use the needle nose to get them started. It's always good to go ahead and do this part because it's a lot easier to do it now than it will be whenever the skull's mounted to the other side. Okay guys, I actually let this thing set for like over five hours, somewhere between five and six hours. I thought, you know, why not let it go over? I don't see what it would hurt. I'd rather get it right the first time than have to add more developer to the skull and do it all over again. So we're gonna unwrap it. I'm gonna take it outside and rinse it off with a water hose. You probably won't be able to see that part because as you can tell, I've waited till it got dark outside. So I'm gonna unwrap it, take it outside, rinse it off, and see how it looks. I don't know what you guys think. Just a second and I'll be right back. All right, so here's the finished product. I actually think it looks pretty good for the first time. Got a little bit of discoloration on the teeth, not a big deal. So, I gotta work tomorrow. It's bedtime. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing in front of the fireplace. I'm going to let it dry out. And then tomorrow, I will show you how to mount it to the plaque. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. All right, it's a couple of days later, and I let this thing dry out really good. If you notice, the crack in the front came back, which is fine. 
Now, me personally, this wouldn't bother me at all. But in case it does, it would bother you. I'm going to show you a, a method I'm going to try here to try to fix it. I'm going to use a tube of this uh, painter's caulk. Obviously, you want to make sure it's white. Have your damp rag or paper towel handy. <clears throat> I'm just going to run a good fine bead. Right down the crack. There you go. Now, me personally, I think I would just leave the crack. But if you wanted to fill it in, you'd have to look pretty hard to notice that hanging on the wall. All right, so now I'm going to start the process of mounting this to the uh, plaque that I showed you. And I'm going to start by drilling a hole right in this little, this little inset right here. And I'm going to use this screw to attach the mount to the wood. So I'm going to use a smaller drill bit to drill the hole. This is a little smaller than I'd like, but it's what I got. So I may have to wallow it out a little bit. So I'll drill this hole here, and then I'll show you the next step. Now I'm going to take the plaque, flip it over to the back, put the screw through. I'm going to take the skull, line the screw up with the hole, Getting straight. 
guy's got a couple of loose teeth. All that boiling loosens, loosens his teeth up. Who are you? Well, actually, I am a dentist. A dentist? There you go. All right, so I'm going to use this stud finder to find the spot the mouth is. The most important thing you can do when you use a stud finder is to test it. And the best way to test it is to find something that you know for a fact is a stud, touch it to it, and see if it can find it. This one's good. Because that one there looks pretty much as good as this one. Now this one is a little bit wider, I will say. But still, looks pretty good. <clears throat> also another option, <clears throat> if you don't want to deal with mounting it to a plaque. This is a deer I killed last year. Hydra dipped it using spray paint, it's pretty cool. But I ordered this, this mount on Amazon. I think it was like 16 bucks. I'll make an attempt to link it in the description. But basically it's just two screws, screw it in. Then this piece of wood has a little magnet in it. Stick it on. That's it. Well, I hope this helped you guys some. We'll see you on the next one.